poverty is sexist. Our societies cannot succeed without the full participation and empowerment of women and girls. And by working with the Global Fund to eliminate AIDS, TB, and malaria, we're taking an essential step towards a fair world for women and girls, and indeed, for all of our most vulnerable. So today, I am challenging you to step up. Canada is challenging you to step up. We have pledged over $800 million to the Global Fund for 2017 to 2019. And then subscribing to my videos. If you don't subscribe, you're a communist and a loser. Subscribe. Oh, and hit the notification. not acknowledging us as a working poor, as an actual group of ourselves, that we are working and we are trying to pay our bills and we're getting really close, but we're just, we're just falling shy of the target. See you tonight. Homelessness starts way before you have no home. You feel like you're falling into a pit. The idea of having a, a long-term, financially set career in, in manufacturing, I think those days are well gone. My dad, he's been working at a job for a while, and I don't think he has full-time yet. And he's supporting a family of five and one job. That's hard. We're working poor. I'm working, and I'm working every day, and I'm working all the overtime I can work, and it's still not enough. You already feel the shame of getting behind in your rent and not being able to provide for your family. It's overwhelming. All jobs should allow people to live with respect and a standard of living where you can afford to have groceries and, and, and a house and, and those kinds of things. You know, we need more affordable houses because, you know, for you to be on the waiting list for 10 years, for nine years, by the time I think maybe you die, Everyone would have their own houses and there wouldn't be anybody having to go into shelters or not being able to afford their rent or food. Having adequate income and having adequate housing is a human right. I dream of a day when I don't have to see my neighbors lining up at a food bank to feed their children. There are universal values, I believe. We all want to be respected as a human being, not a slave. I don't want a big $3 million house or a Ferrari in my driveway. I just want to have food on my table and a roof that's secure. That's all I want. I guess one of the biggest barriers that people that are especially homeless or financially insecure have is the lack of an address. So an increase of socialized housing or even just socialized accommodations which would allow multiple citizens to use even if it's just to have a landline and an address which helps them hurdle barriers such as finding employment or accessing certain services. Maybe access to uh, skill programs so that they can learn a trade or learn a service or learn some form of uh, program so that they can put that into, the, into like, uh, getting a job into the workforce. Yeah, oh, basically I think like along with what they're saying, but I think that you start with the basic income. And I think you start with that, then you start adding all the skills programs and the resources like that. But I think it has to start with that. Because otherwise people are just, they can't do it. I don't know, I, I've been reading that in Europe they're giving everyone a certain minimum wage. 
So regardless of what you do, what your background is, whatever, everyone gets a certain minimum amount to use as best they can. And they tried that as an experiment, apparently it didn't work. The idea of giving people something for nothing, it doesn't work. You have zero value for whatever you give them. So what to do about it, I really don't know. I don't know. The population, they've always had poor, they've always had middle, they always had extreme rich and everything in between. And it doesn't matter what you do, there's no perfect system out there. So I really can't answer that. I would say economic growth, good economy. Diver diversification of economy. Because I live in Alberta, so I think it's a big one nowadays. As before, they were investing everything, pouring all the money into oil and gas. Right. And now it's, you know, right. the situation. I'm not sure that it's ultimately solvable. I think there's always going to be a marginal number of people who, for whatever reasons, are just not able to uh, kind of live in, in that kind of social construct, right? And, uh, but I think that you know, our responsibility needs to be to continue to encourage uh, governments and uh, people that have the, both the power and the money uh, to make sure that, that uh, housing is available and that uh, you know, we can get people that, that desperately need, whether it be medical care, and need clothing, need a, you know, a warm place to sleep, that we can provide that um, and not, and not you know, be you know, walking out into a park and seeing you know, little tent, tent cities and whatnot. Um, it just doesn't, does, I don't think it represents the kind of country that we are, the, the civil country that we can be. Um, and yeah, we just need to kind of keep our foot on the gas. Well, I think we do a lot in terms of social programs to try and uh, improve people's situations, but I do think that we struggle a bit in the outreach department. The programs are there, but we don't link that with trying to actually reach the people who need it. They have to actively seek it out. And I understand that that's a balancing act. You want, in order for people to move out of poverty, they do have to have some wish to move out of poverty, but at the same time, if they're not well educated to the opportunities, how can they choose to make that movement? So it's a tricky balancing act that I think we're not there yet. We've definitely spent money on the programs, but we haven't spent money in the right way, in my opinion. Immediately all that comes to mind is more homeless shelters. The, like for, the winter time sucks here, so I mean, that can be deadly. Um, and dealing with the meth ep epidemic, because I've seen firsthand living downtown that, that affects people very dramatically. Increased taxes on the super rich. I think the the disparity in the, the highest income earners and the lowest has just gotten out of hand and we have to do something about that. Certainly uh, systemic racism is, is a huge thing in Canada. Uh, you know, uh, FSIN and, and uh, those organizations really need to start speaking up for their, their people and the Métis Nation of Saskatchewan and Canada. Um, when you consider that most people under the poverty line are First Nation or Métis, uh, that's a huge concern. And um, certainly it's forgotten, you know. Well, the guaranteed income supplement might be a way, but that's no guarantee either. It's a possibility, but not guaranteed. I think one of the things that's linked to poverty that people don't understand is addiction is a serious issue, linked to poverty and mental health. So those things have to be addressed before you can deal with poverty. Other than what's already been done, it's, it's tough to reinvent things all the time. But again, the government has to be able to listen, be aware, and not be complacent. So uh, there might be some new ideas coming out of this experience of COVID-19 that may help because people are wanting to turn the sod on new ideas, right? In Saskatoon for downtown, for example, there's a lot of people every single day that are asking for change and there's repeat people that you do get to know and see often and it'd be nice for the city to 
I don't know if we need to necessarily make um, another lighthouse, like more more places for these people to go and have a safe place to sleep and eat. But I feel like we can definitely do a better job um, with poverty in Saskatoon. I really do like the uh, guaranteed basic income plan. I was not a fan until about a year ago when I've actually done some research, read up some books and some articles. And there's been case studies uh, in Manitoba and other countries. I didn't think it would work, but actually I'm beginning to be convinced that actually it would be a very good idea for, for Canada to seriously consider a universal basic income. I think that probably would be the best thing we could do for, for poor, poor people. Mental health is my thing. I think we need a lot more help with mental health in the city. For like people that are struggling with addictions and people that are struggling with things that they don't know about with their mental health, I feel like that causes homelessness and causes not showing up to work and causes a lot of the stuff that leads up to you being in poverty? Uh, you know what, that's a tough question. Uh, we have a real problem here. Um, I, again, I could go outside the box and, you know, my sort of socialist background would say that maybe we need to stop investing so much in foreign policy and a little more in the home economics and deal with our own people. We have people here living on the street on a regular basis and uh, don't have enough to eat. And, uh, you know, I, I appreciate the political behind it all to invest in foreign countries. But I think we need to look after our own a little bit. And then subscribing to my videos. If you don't subscribe, you're a communist and a loser. Subscribe. Oh, and hit the notification.